And our man, Hank South, recruiting guru for Horns 24-7. Hank, how you doing? I'm doing good, y'all. How are y'all? Oh, man. Good, man. We are, we are just uh, trying, to, trying to put it all together. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Texas yeah. beats Alabama. They're selling T-shirts over there at the co-op. <laughs> Game over. 34-24. You think they won the natty. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd hold off on buying one of those. Just <laughs> <laughs> Man. Well, yeah. Hank, let's get your thoughts on the game because you uh you covered Alabama for, for eight years. Um, you're covering the horns and the recruiting. We'll get to the visitor list for Wyoming, but what did you think of the game? It- I mean, it, it was almost like Texas was the Alabama like that. that I mean, they, you know, they kind of, they imposed their will, you know, it was everything about the game from just start to finish every time, you know, Alabama punched back, Texas delivered another blow. You know, Alabama just really didn't have an answer for them. They were the more physical team. Um, you know, the deep ball was connecting for Quinn Ewers, Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell. Um, the running game was able to close out um, in the fourth quarter. So, you know, it was just it, it was it was pretty amazing to see. Um, you know, I I predicted Texas to win. I went thirty one twenty eight. So uh, can't say I'm shocked, but you know, I, I didn't see them playing as well as they did all four quarters. Um, you know, especially coming off the Rice Week when you know there there were some questions about the offensive line for them to come together and in Bryant Denny Stadium at night and uh, and have that kind of game and, and kind of uh, bully the Alabama defensive line. Um, it, it was pretty pretty incredible to see. So. Um, I, I was had the opportunity to be there, and, and it was uh, kind of an atmosphere unlike anything I've seen in college football so far. Yeah, yeah. You and I were the only ones who picked Texas to win, Hank. Where's, I don't know, right? Where, where's everybody else? Like geniuses, <laughs> geniuses. Yeah, I definitely wasn't one of those guys. So <laughs> y'all can gloat all you want, but I'll take the gloat. I'll take it. Hey, right. Hank, the Quinn Ewers that you saw this Saturday—that's what everybody expected he was going to be once he got to college coming out of South Lake Carroll, where y'all ranked him so high coming out of that school. And Sark had him locked in. I mean, 24 for 38, 349 yards, three touchdowns, and just beautiful deep ball shots that all Texas fans have been waiting on. What did you see in Quinn Ewers with his growth from last season to this season? Yeah, you know, everything that's been talked about him this offseason, just, you know, he, he slimmed down, um, he cut his mullet, you know, it, the, just the poise was there. You know, going into that kind of atmosphere, I don't, I don't think people – probably everyone knows it's a big deal, but I don't think people realize how big of a, you know, win that is. Um, that, that just doesn't happen to Alabama, particularly, um, you know, at home at night. Um, they'll, they'll lose some games, but they don't really get beat up. I think that was Nick Saban's – uh, worst lost as an Alabama head coach at home, um, and, you know, the double digit win. But, you know, with Quinn Ewers, you know, he, you just, you know, we saw glimpses of it last year against Alabama before he went out with the injury. Um, he was kind of carving him up last year um, before Dallas Turner's hit. And then, you know, he could, that just kind of extended over to this game. Um, you know, I think this was one he, I, I think he said, he, you know, he had this one circled. They had this one circled, um, you know, to really prove a point to the country that, you know, this team is for real. You know, they have the guys. And, you know, um, you know, I, I think obviously Steve, Steve Sarkisian had them prepared as well. AJ Milwee, I think they had a really awesome game plan. And I just think the poise is what, what watching the replay, watching it back when I got, when I got home, you know, that, that's what I would kind of, um, you know, circle most. Um, you know, when describing his game. Well, this, uh, this totally changes the narrative on, on Steve Sarkeesian and Quinn Ewers showing they can, they can be elite. Um, hell, everybody thinks Texas, I mean, they're going to be favored in every game they play the rest of the season. Uh, let's get to the impact on recruits, Hank, because I don't know which end of the stadium you were sitting in, uh, for the for the Bama game, but Keelan Robinson runs up to where the Bama recruits are, and he's like, "Y'all need to come to Texas." <laughs> so, what has been the impact of this uh, win by Texas on the recruiting landscape? Yeah, th- there's a lot of excitement. Um, Jordan Scruggs on Horns twenty four seven. He did a stellar job getting reactions. Um, I-, I think. 
in the stampede and his recruiting reaction story, there's over, there's close to 70 reactions uh, from recruits. They're all excited. You know, they're talking about Sark and Quinn Ewers slinging the ball around Texas playmakers, making big plays, the defense, you know, getting after, getting after Jalen Milrow and, and, uh, and keeping Alabama bogged down. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot of buzz. Um, I think we're going to have an opportunity to see here in the next few weeks with some decisions coming up for some of Texas's top targets, you know, just, is that buzz real? Are we going to see some some decisions go Texas's way? Um, and, and again, I said this yesterday on, on the 24-7 Sports Recruiting Show. Uh, this is a huge win, and I think it's going to catch recruits' attention for sure. Uh, but also Texas needs to finish this. You know, they need – like this is we, – we saw them, you know, even after last year, after the Alabama game, with, with them keeping it close, uh, there was recruits – there was excitement. There was recruiting excitement. There was buzz. Uh, but then they go out and, uh, and lose some games they shouldn't have lost. Um, so, you know, that, that's, uh, that's something they need to focus on. I know, I know that's kind of that culture Steve Sarkeesian talks about, you know, they're, they're taking it one game at a time. So I think they have the right mindset, but in terms of recruiting, I, I think there's going to be some payoff we see in the next few weeks with some decisions coming up. And, you know, if they continue this role, I, I think we could see, you know, th- this class really propel itself into that, you know, top 10, top five range come early signing day. Yeah, Hank, I retweeted your Ryan Williams already planning to go to Texas, and yeah. he's an Alabama commit. It wasn't even 24 hours after the game that yeah. he's doing that, so I know that's another sour taste for Nick Saban and crew. Uh, talk about Micah Hudson. He committed to Texas Tech, which nobody should be surprised from his pops being an alum to all the money he's supposed to get once he touches down in Lubbock, but the Horns are still going after some other wide receivers. Talk about that yeah and i will say on ryan williams i posted that on sunday actually we were in sarah land on friday night staying there before driving up to tuscaloosa so we went and saw him play and he did give me that quote prior to the game i shouldn't have i hadn't had posted the the interview yet so i think bama fans were, were saying oh no it's already all coming down but uh but no they've been they've been recruiting ryan williams pretty hard so uh, i think it was going to happen either way but um yeah micah hudson uh, announced his commitment to texas tech you know we were expecting that back in late June, I feel like, you know, it was just, you know, when was that going to happen? And, you know, he, he called off the Texas official visit, um, you know, communication has been here and there with Texas, uh, but it, it's been very clear. Texas tech was, was trending. So last night's um, news wasn't a big surprise. Um, I think, you know, that, that one wide receiver we're watching or keeping an eye on right now is, is Ryan Wingo, um, the five-star uh, pass catcher from, uh, from St. Louis. He's supposed to be, or he's expected to be on campus this weekend. So he's already taken his official visit. That's when um, back in June, that's when the momentum's really kind of started shifting to Texas. Um, Steve Wolfong on 24 seven sports was the first one to, to really uh, he put in the crystal ball for Texas. And, and ever since then, I think people, you know, they've been uh, realizing that that's, that's where it's, it's looking like it's headed. So he'll be on campus this weekend. He's been saying um, December 20th for announcements, which, which I think is the first day of the early signing period. Um, but there's some buzz, maybe, you know, getting back to Austin this weekend, night game, um, coming off the big win, you know, could he, uh, could he decide to move that up? So that's, that's one big key storyline we're watching ahead of, uh, ahead of this weekend at DKR. Yeah. And talk about the rest of that visitor list, Hank, um, because Texas, it was almost like they had a feeling that the Alabama game was going to go their way with the way that, you know, they have this visitor list looking right. Yeah, it's going to keep growing as, as the weekend gets closer. And also, you know, it's a benefit, uh, you know, having night games. It gives kids time to, uh, you know, if they have Friday night games that end late, um, they can still make the game, um, you know, driving down to Austin or, or, or even flying if they need to um, the next day. But a uh, couple key 2024 guys we're, we're, uh, we're watching outside of Brian Wingo. Uh, one who was actually in Brian Denny Stadium this past weekend is Terry Bussey, the five-star athlete uh, from Timpson. He is – uh, I think it's still tentative that he he's uh, he's checking out um, the game this weekend and, and he's supposed to make a decision on September 28th. So all the buzz with that one has been um, pointed towards Texas A&M as of late. Um, but again, you know, he saw Texas just upset Alabama on his official visit to Alabama. Uh, and I, I think we even mentioned this last week, you know, if you can parlay that with, uh, you know, a strong visit for the Wyoming game, you know, maybe things can can uh, shift Texas's way more the next uh, couple weeks for Terry Bussey. Uh, another one is Ter- um, Danny Okoye, who uh, I think that might still be tentative as well, uh, but he has been planning. That's kind of what he was, uh, you know, looking at getting back for the Wyoming game, the uh, four-star edge rusher from Oklahoma. Uh, he's announcing a decision on September 20th, um, 
between Texas, Oklahoma, and uh, Tennessee. Oklahoma's had the momentum there. You know, if they're able to get them back on campus this weekend, uh, make a big push ahead of next uh, next week on September 20th, crazier things have happened. So um, I, I think, you know, we're going to keep seeing this visitors list grow. I checked in with Kobe Black's camp, five-star cornerback from Waco. He's actually going to Oklahoma State this weekend to see his brother. His older brother plays for the Cowboys. So he won't be on campus. Still think Texas is in good shape there, though. He was uh, – I talked to his mom about the, the – um, the Alabama game and, you know, they, they were, they're pretty, uh, they thought it was pretty, <laughs> that was pretty good to, to, to see that. So um, I think they're in good shape there. And, you know, we're going to see a lot of the commits come back to campus. Um, you know, Trey Owens is probably gonna be at every game helping recruit um, uh, Daniel Cruz, you know, those guys, all the guys that are in, in, uh, in close proximity, I think we'll see them back and then some underclassmen as well. So it, it should be a good, good turnout. And uh, we'll have like a more extensive comprehensive list on horns 24 seven, I think posted closer to the weekend. Any A and M commits re rethinking things after uh, their defense looked like Swiss cheese against the Miami Hurricanes? Yeah, you know everyone's been asking me about Dominic McKinley. Um, recently committed to A and M. Um, I actually I checked in with him um, because you know they they did say they wanted to see a Texas game this fall prior to his commitment to the Aggies. Um, they're kind of taking a break from recruiting. His mom told me. Um, I think they got some backlash from. Uh, from uh, LSU fans in their backyard about not picking LSU. So I think you know maybe have a little bit of a sour taste in their mouth of the whole recruiting process right now. Um, so McKinley to be determined. I still think, you know, Texas will, will work on him on the defensive line front. Um, another Texas saying them commit miles Davis. Um, we actually caught up with him when uh, his team played Westlake the other night. And uh, he, he plans to attend the Texas tech game later this fall. So I don't think Texas is making a huge push there yet, but if they do, I think that one can be kind of interesting um, towards signing day. So uh, he's a really, really excellent, excellent player as well. So I think those are the two, uh, maybe Ty Anthony Smith. There hasn't been a lot of contact, the linebacker uh, from Jasper, he's committed to a and um, I, I don't think Texas has really been pushing very hard for him right now, but you know, if they, if A&M keeps, uh, you know, taking a downturn, Texas keeps going up, you know, guys might look around. So it, it'll be a fun fall for sure. Hey, Hank, you covering Alabama for all the years that you did before you started covering the Longhorns. What you saw with them on Saturday, yes, Quinn Ewers was great. Yes, Sark was great. But still, 10 turnovers for the Crimson – or 10, excuse me, 10 penalties for the Crimson Tide, two interceptions, Jalen Milrow. Just didn't look like that Alabama team that we've seen in recent years, which is the reason why they have this dynasty that they're on. What did your what was your takeaway from their side of the ball and what they did? Yeah, you know when I watched the replay, you know I I really don't think I mean those interceptions were not great, but I really don't think Jalen Milrow played that bad of a game. I, I think it, you almost I feel like every snap I saw was low. He was having to <laughs> start from a disadvantage he, almost every snap. I think you have to look at that interior offensive line. They had a freshman left tackle. Um, that was getting bullied. Um, so his offensive line wasn't giving him a lot of help. He threw some pretty good balls. Um, that one to Jermaine Burton that um, later late in the game was, was big. Or was, was it Jermaine Burton or Isaiah? It was one of those two. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't think he played horrible, but that's kind of something we've been seeing um, with Alabama the last few years. You know, they uh, the penalties, like just it's not that disciplined Alabama team you've seen you know, as much. And I, I think they're going to be fine. I think they're going to get the mistakes fixed. I think they'll probably, you know, they're good. They're going to be a factor in the SEC and, and maybe a team that Texas sees again, if all things um, go as planned for Texas, um, you know, as, as they want, want it to go. Um, so um, I, I know there's been discussion about putting in Tyler Buckner, you know, replacing Jalen Milrow. Maybe we'll see that when they play at USF this week. I feel like that's a weird game, Alabama at, at USF. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it is weird. You know, I, I covered them last year. They had two losses by a combined two points, and that was a bad year for them. And, you know, I've seen other losses. You know, they got beat up by Clemson a few years ago in the title game. Um, so, you know, not <laughs> not the typical I've been used to covering, but um, I, I think their mistakes are, are certainly correctable, and I think they'll be a, a factor when all is said and done. Yeah, we'll, we'll – uh... It's crazy that Alabama had two regular season losses last year for the first time since – Two thousand ten, unbelievable. Yeah, I mean Alabama fans have had it so good for so long. Yeah. Um, but let me ask you this: I was surprised they didn't incorporate more designed quarterback. Ooh. 
Yeah, sorry, I, my uh, my three year old just walked up on me. Uh, uh, I know, right? You no, know, it's it's like they were game planning for. Uh, they were they were trying to. One sec, guys. <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. Hey, he promised me he was going to be quiet during this, and here he is. No, that's fine. Uh, and if you need to, if you need to bounce, no. we get it, man. We no, we there, he's good. Um, it was like they were they were trying to game plan it, him as a drop back passer. Yeah, it's like. Maybe take a playbook out of uh, the Eagles, you know, play a Jalen Hurts kind of game. But yeah, no QB runs or anything. It was, uh, it was interesting. <laughs> My no, wife's good. Kind of, you know. <laughs> so, uh, no, he's what's, the, what's the three-year-old's name? That's Max. Max, you can get Max on screen. Max, you want to be on the camera? Come on, Max. Oh. Okay. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> little he'll he'll get over that. He'll get over I know, that. My stage, wife, but... uh, they were watching the game on Saturday, uh, and he was fully of the belief that I was playing in the game. He didn't think I was there just watching the game. He thought I was playing in the game. So, he, look at Daddy run with the ball. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think they need to design some more runs for Jalen yeah. Milrow. Play to his strengths. My God, the, every time the guy got out loose on his, you know, with his legs, you were like, Oh man. Yeah. He's, he's a load. He's a, he's a really talented athlete. And yeah, if they can just, and I really thought they would, you know, kind of, yeah, I don't don't know. Maybe Tommy Reese wasn't as creative as we were giving him credit for, but I think they'll, they'll, they'll fix it. I hope they still give him a shot. You know, I've always been a fan of Jalen Milrow. He's a great kid. Um, Obviously he was committed to Texas at one point and then, you know, he, uh, he's a, a big fan of C Sarkeesian as well. So, um, hopefully things work out for him because I think uh, I think he's got a pretty high ceiling when it's all said and done. Yeah. Well, Hank, good stuff, my friend. Always appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. Hey, and tell Max he's welcome to be on the show whenever he's ready. Thanks, <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. All right. <laughs> there he is, Hank. Hank South, breaking it down for you.